Hi guys, now one of the most common questions I get is um, about errors that happen on people's servers, whether the PC servers, console servers, local servers, that sort of stuff. And people will often give me a specific thing that has gone wrong, and then ask me for ideas about why it might have gone wrong. Or sometimes they can be really vague as well. Now sometimes I can answer these because it's like a real common mistake that they make. But often the problem is, Errors can be quite convoluted. So what I thought I would do is kind of share my mindset about how I go around sort of trying to fix errors on my server when things don't work right. And also, I'm going to go through kind of a, a little bit of a be best practice whereby you can hopefully avoid errors happening um, in the first place. Okay, so the first thing I say is if you think you have an error on your server, maybe something's not spawning in right or um, something doesn't seem to be happening, the first big question I would ask you, and I ask myself when I when I get these things, is is it really an error? Or has it maybe not just had enough time to work itself out? So what happens is when your server is running and it's churning through the central loot economy and doing different things, everything doesn't happen instantly. So say for something like a you've made a mod where new vehicles spawn in and they've got all their bits on them. Well, it could be that the old vehicles haven't had chance to spawn out yet. Um, and unless you uh, adjust the idle times on your server, when the last person logs off, the server goes to sleep and nothing happens. So bear that in mind. You might, might need to adjust your idle time so the server can churn and so the changes you have made to your XMLs have chance to, to take effect. Also, everything has a lifetime, doesn't it, on your server? So say you've done a mod that changes it so that everything spawns in pristine or guns spawn in with magazines, that sort of thing. And yet you're still coming across items that are worn or damaged or guns that don't have magazines. Well, it's probably because they've been um, interfered with by players or they've been in, uh, players have come across and um, looked at them or picked them up. And so they then have a lifetime. So it's going to take them a while to cycle through. So if you think you've got an error... It might not be an error. Really make sure it is. Now, if you're on PC, one of the best ways to deal with this is if you install something like VPP Admin Tools by Dewan. This is an amazing tool which enables you to be able to um, use the XML editor to find specific items. So if you've made a change to like um, the uh, ADA, the, the off-road um hatchback or something like that you can you can go into the xml editor you can say where are these and you can you can trap uh, teleport across the map and you can look at them and you can see the changes that have made been made um, on those things or you could even say you've done changes to zombies you can search for specific zombie, zombies and teleport to them also you can use esp which means that as you're walking along the map um you get uh, prompts on the screen where all the loot is around so you can see the change you've made very very quickly and it's a great way to uh, fault find and also to find changes to, to things that might be quite rare bears are a good example let's say you make some changes to the bears events and you're like well wh where are the bears well with vpp admin you can go into the xml editor xml editor, look up arc arc toss i think it is for the bear and you'll see where they've spawned and it's as easy as that now if you're not on pc Unfortunately, you've got to do a lot of, <laughs> of, of testing, haven't you? Um, play testing, which is which is a bit of a pain, I'll admit. But I remember, you know, when I first started off modding, I would spend hours running around my PlayStation uh, test server, my PlayStation community servers, just checking that things were working. Often, I would rope in members of the community as well and say, "Look, can we just run around <laughs> and look for? You know, are there some more helicopter crashes?" Um, our vehicles spawning in with their wheels on on this sort of stuff and it's not easy you know i mean one of the easiest things to come up with when it comes to modding files on on, on, on anything and um, and anything in life really is the idea having the idea of changing something oh right i'm going to make it so that zombies have um uh, big assault backpacks on yeah great idea okay so now we've got to do the code so that can be quite difficult but actually testing it to see if it works that's the real hard bit, the quality assurance. And there's no real substitute for that. There's no substitute for going into the game and checking it out. And the other thing that could well happen is it might work now, but it might not work tomorrow because the central loot economy becomes overloaded. But game testing, make sure you've tested it in-game. 
Now, if things are still not working, I'm like, there's definitely an error that's happening. My first port of call tends to be an XML validator. And I'll put a link to this in the description below the video. So any files that I've been messing around with, I'll run through an XML validation again. Now, this doesn't pick up every error, but what it does pick up is where you've got the syntax, where you've got the spelling wrong on a particular uh, edit. Most commonly, when you're using something like um, text editor to copy and paste between documents, it's very easy to make a mistake and like copy over a bracket or miss out an opening or a closing argument, and that makes the XML invalid. Now, it doesn't mean it might completely stop working, but it could be that it makes an error happen somewhere else as well. You get what are called cascading errors. So there might be an error at the top of a document, at the top of a piece of code, but it cascades down, so it only affects something further down the code. But at least if you have made an error like that, the XML validator will say there's an error and it gives you a chance to really look at it. Similarly with the JSON um, formatter as well. Now this one, JSON formatter, formatter at curiousconcept.com, you've got to watch out for it because what it does is, actually, well, it's because I always have this ticked, it will fix the JSON as well. <laughs> so you'll say validate this and then it, underneath it will say, oh, I've fixed it. So maybe untick that so it doesn't fix it. But the good thing about having the fix is it kind of tells you what the error was. So you can do that. Um, now, if you have got an error um, and you you know you find the error and you, you you correct it, obviously you're going to upload it to your your server and put it on as well. But it could be that you can't find the error. Um, you're not sure. You know there's an error somewhere, but you can't find it. And that's where I'd say is go back to the instructions that came with whatever you're trying to do. So the thing you're trying to do, there'll probably be some instructions with it. So, for example, here we've got Daisy Expansion. So there's loads of instructions underneath on the Steam page that tell you how to install it and how to use it. They have their own um, wiki on it on GitHub. We can go through. They've got their own Discord as well. You can go through and you can check things like that. Bear in mind, though, as well, is that some things may well have bugs in them. A classic a classic example is some of my code, you know, or my GitHub repositories. There have been errors in those codes before that I haven't picked up on that people have come to me afterwards and said, hey, Rob, uh, you've made a mistake in this and it's not working properly. So sometimes you may well be trying to get something to work that just doesn't work. But it depends on you know, how common it is, how long has it been around. For example, sometimes I get people now who will tell me that the... Um, maybe some files I did for the last update are wrong, but I know they've been working on my server for the past several months. I know they're okay, so that the mistake has got to be somewhere else. Now, if, if you still can't figure out what's gone wrong from the instructions that come with whatever you're trying to do, then you know by all means go back to vanilla files. Go back, go to the Bohemian Interactive um, uh, GitHub uh, repository, download the vanilla mission files, and replace anything you've edited. With the vanilla files then restart your server and see if it works now well see if the server is working at least at a vanilla level so if for example you did a mod whereby it changed vehicles so that the vehicles spawned with all their bits on and then you had an error where they were spawning well the vehicles weren't spawning at all for example so you go back and say, okay, so I I mucked around with the C, the events and I, I mucked around with the CFG spawnable types. Let's put them back to vanilla. Let's go back into the server. Let's ha have a look at the vehicles. Let's make sure they're spawning. And let's make sure they're spawning with, with at least the odd bit on them. So they should spawn in with randomly with stuff, shouldn't they? And then you can you can look for that. And if they are, you can say, okay, I'm back to a level playing field now. I'm back to vanilla. Let's look at this. What I was trying to do. And let's let's have it another go and do things one at a time and hopefully remember at least if at least you can get your server back to vanilla at least this will work and so survivors who are wandering around your map they'll be able to find loot they'll be able to find food they'll be able to find weapons they'll be able to fight zombies and they will have a basic daisy experience and if you've put in other mods like boosted weapons and things like that those things will hang around for a bit while you can figure out how the other things that didn't go right you can get them working again and then introduce them so that's the kind of how do you solve problems and how do you try and find them and then kind of how do you fix them at the end now how do you avoid them happening in the first place now i'm a big fan of having a plan 
So when you're going to mod your server, make a list. So for example, this is a list for my 1.22 Chernerous hardcore server, which the idea is making it more difficult to survive. So what I do is I have a list of all the things I want to do, and I slowly work my way through them on, in my files, and I implement them. Um, and therefore I know exactly what should be happening and what shouldn't be happening and then I can go in and I can test for this afterwards I remember the testing so always have a list of what you're trying to do also that means that if you've got an error that happens it, this will remind you what you did so you might go back and go oh wait a minute I was mucking around with the temperature that means I was mucking around with the CFG gameplay file maybe I should go and have a look at that for the error next up I would always recommend using something like notepad plus plus for doing your editing the reason for this is that it will help you pick up errors sometimes. So if, for example, I delete that closing um, bracket, you can see how the colors changed, and that will help you find things. So if I, for example, accidentally copy and pasted this, but for, but didn't copy and paste the first bit there, you know, it, oh, it's changed the black. Um, I would spot, you know, you may well spot that. The danger is sometimes if you don't copy and paste the whole thing like that, you know, nothing has changed and you, we would end up with a cascading error. So it doesn't help you with, with everything, but it will help you with um, some things. Let's go back, let's undo that so it reappears. So use something like, type, like Notepad++ so it color codes your text as you're going through it back up I mean I've just put this as a wiki page but before you edit any files make sure you've got a backup so if for example you have an edited types.xml file that you go in and change if something goes wrong and you're not sure what that is you don't have to go all the way back to Bohemia Interactive's vanilla file you'll have a backup of the file that was working before and you can go to that so before you do anything always have a backup um, and if you're on PC, install a local server. I mean, this is really important, I think, um, for, for modders, because having a local server enables you to test things very, very quickly, and it speeds up the time it takes to find errors as well. So if you're installing a particular mod and it doesn't work, it doesn't take too long to uninstall it or reinstall it and do all that sort of stuff where where you're working on a remote server you know, you've got to upload things um, you've got to go into the control panel for your server you've got to change settings and it's, it's easy to, to forget stuff with the local server it's a similar process but it's easier to iterate you can go faster through the process so you can hopefully find uh, what's going wrong and also it's really good because it gives you practice. So if you have a local server, whenever you've got to install a mod, for example, for PC, if you install it on your local server first, you'll have that practice of, okay, so I need to copy the the at uh, mod file into the right place, right? I need to copy the key, right? I need to run the server once so it creates its settings in the config folder. I've got to need to add these files, these um, code snippets to the types of XML. And so on and so forth. So when you come to install it on the remote server, you kind of you've had a practice, run, and then obviously you test it that it works, and then you have you've had a practice run. So that when it comes to install it on your remote server, you know you've you've already gone gone through it once. So the chance of you making a mistake are less. So there we go. Hopefully that helps. Um, and uh, I guess I'd also finish off by saying that, especially with the PC mods. As the game changes, so we go from update to update, that will break some things that previously used to work as well. And this can actually, this is also true for console. With we've had things occasionally where Bohemia Interactive have changed the way that um, uh, it uses code in the XML files or in the uh, JSON files in particular. For example, in the CFG gameplay.json. They went from using noughts and ones to designate whether something was on or off to trues and falses, which break, broke lots of things. So it's not always you. 99% of the time it is you. <laughs> you have made a mistake somewhere, but sometimes it isn't. Okay, hopefully that will help you on your way to solving some of your errors. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of people who will be able to write in the, co in the comments who have got more effective ways of fault finding, but this is kind of a rough idea, and this kind of works for me. Um, if you have found it useful, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And, of course, I'll see you again soon.